Uh, someone had said to John, I think they were a friend of mine or an acquaintance of mine, and they were just so thrilled to be able to be there and to be sitting somewhere with John Entwistle. And so they were trying to think of things to talk to him about, and I think they said, So, uh, how do you like Godfrey? Or what do you think of Godfrey's singing and playing? And John said, I don't know, I haven't heard of him yet. So for the next tour, we put one of my stacks on his side of the stage, so he can, he's still there.
Let's do something big round of applause to Sean and John for long hands. And As you must know, a lot of the early Who stuff was um, uh, influenced and derived from some Motown music. Uh, John told me that they were really big fans of like early American pop stuff and uh, they were dying to get the records over here in England. And Substitute in particular, he told me he lifted the bass line from Sugar Pie Honey Bunch. If, and if you play it, it's kind of... Sugar pie, honey bun. You know what I mean? Ruby's true. Is this true? Okay, what's next, guys? Okay. Yeah, just tune that one, too. This will be a little rough. Uh, some of you may have seen um, a YouTube clip of, uh, of us performing this song at the uh, Woodstock 99 Festival in Rome, New York, where we were asked to perform on the uh, artist, the, the emerging artist stage. <laughs> no one's ever heard of that, John Epstein. You know what I'm saying? They had two main stages, and these were stages where, like, Jewel and Seven Dust would play. <laughs> and then on the Emerging Artist stage was the John Entwistle Band. And um, we weren't even meant to be there, but it just so happened that we had a, the, the weekend off, and we were in the New York area, and we had a friend who was actually running that stage for Emerging Artists. And he went to the trouble of asking all the artists if they could take five minutes off each one of their sets so that they can squeeze us in there, which was pretty cool. Remember that, Terry?
so much. I did not know if I could still do it. I don't know what I broke. Yeah, last time was uh, 1999. Well, actually, uh, when, when John passed away, we did a tribute concert for him in New York. Out in Long Island, in this club where I used to play all the time. And uh, had to be 2002 by the time we organized it. And uh, my son played bass on it, which was pretty cool. He the whole thing. Okay. Okay, I think I'm gonna stick with this guitar because it's staying in tune better than the other one, but Johnny baby! Oh, this is back from the deck, so we're gonna go up to the little down. I see Brooke is here. All the way from Texas. So there was another situation where uh, we were sitting in the lobby of the Riga, the Riga Hotel where John used to stay in the city when they played, uh, when the Who played in the garden. And we're sitting, uh, uh, he would like to hold court every, every night in the hotel bar lounge area. And the fans would all come up to hang out with him until the sun came up ready. And one of them said, so how did you guys hook up? Pointing to me, pointing to John. How did you guys hook up? And I said, well, it's an amazing story, actually. But and then John said, I'll tell it. <laughs> and um, he said, I, uh, I actually asked for Godfrey specifically. She said, really? That's amazing. Is that true? And I went, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I said to Steve Longo, who's the cheapest guitar player in New York? <laughs> so that's how I'm going to get it. According to John. <laughs> and it was the cheapest guitar Not anymore. Got a resume now.
So the other night I was, um, someone had posted a, an article, or a, I should say a link to an article on, the, on, the, on my Facebook page about the Who switching over from Vox Amps to Marshall Amps and how it actually happened or whatever had to do with the changeover at the, at the time. And um, supposedly they had a van full of gear that got stolen and uh, they were at the time thinking, trying to think ahead and they weren't going to get a guard dog to uh, keep in the van to keep people from stealing the gear. And I don't know, for some reason I remember John telling me the story as that they stole the dog and the van and the gear and everything all together. But apparently that's not true because I wrote that on the, on the page and Cy Langston, who was a very dear friend of John's and a very uh, uh, close associate from the very beginning days, uh, had written, oh, there's so much BS going around on the Facebook thing, fables that are being made of, or whatever. So apparently they were in, uh, What's, what's the name of the place? The Battersea Dogs Home. Getting a guard dog for the van, and that's when they stole the van. And all the gear. <laughs> so they were like, okay, let's go. Hey, <laughs> there's the van. And that's, that's supposedly when it happened, which is why they then went to Jim Marshall and said, hey, we need some new ants, make them big and make them loud, or whatever. So that's that urban legend for you. Thank you. But anyway, I said to Cy, you should be here doing doing this Who convention. You should be over here telling some stories and doing some stuff, and, and we even be able to get you up to play guitar on my size. Because you did originally play guitar on my size. Oh. Okay, but you, like you probably all know that already, right? Cy Langston helped produce and engineer a lot of John's early stuff and played guitar on my size. As well as Peter Frampton played on a lot of stuff, right? Yeah? Isn't it? Anyway, enough of this. I like my shows to be both entertaining and educational. <laughs> so.
So one of the first times that I uh, met John in person, we had jammed a few times at the China Club in New York City when uh, Roger Daltrey did the Daltrey Sings Townsend concert at um, Carnegie Hall, which is a famous DVD as well. Uh, you were there, weren't you? And Lauren, you were there. You were, you were in the movie, actually, in the front of that. Um, and uh, I, was, I was running the jam night out of the China Club, and after the Dolby Six Townsend show at Carnegie Hall, John Entwistle came up to the China Club with a bunch of people that were on that show down at Carnegie Hall. He brought Eddie Vedder with him, who I had no clue who he was. At the, at the time, and I can remember the owner of the club saying to me, uh, Eddie, Eddie Vedder is in the audience, so get him up to sing a song. Make sure you get him up to sing a song. And at one point I just went, uh, is there an Eddie Vedder out there? <laughs> you, your car is on fire. You know, whatever, just like I was making an announcement. <laughs> he came up and he sang uh, Happy, Happy Jack with us. And he kept going to the bridge, like, too soon, then <laughs> we have to be following him or whatever. But so that was the first time that I actually played with John, and then he came back again the next night. And Rabbit was there, and Pino Palladino, and Phil Phil Palmer was playing guitar as well. He he came and played, and um, so it was a really star. It was a really star-studded evening because even before that, I believe. Jason Bonham and Steve Lukather were there playing with us. So we were jamming with all these people this one particular night in February of 1994. And um, a year later was when John called uh, our drummer in the, in the band and said that he wanted to use me in the band as a guitar player. Um, just like a year later. And it had nothing to do with how cheap I was or anything. I just said, I worked well with that guy. And we had done uh, a bunch of things, you know, when you first jam with somebody, you do a bunch of impromptu stuff. And Linda Perry from Four Non Blondes was there. She wanted to do a whole lot of love. And, uh... That middle bit in Whole Lot of Love, where it does that whole dream sequence thing and uh, all that stuff. And then, way down inside. And then that chord goes... That whole thing. So when it came to that bit, John looked at me and he went, what's those chords, right? <laughs> e and A. E and A? Okay. And the part came, and he went, boom, boom. And he was so happy. <laughs> he looked at me and he went, that went well. <laughs> With a big smile, I just knew from that point that this is gonna, this is gonna be something here. We're, we're gonna do some more shit. Okay, time for another song, you think? Yeah. Hey. This one. Jesus. Problem. You can do it, guys. You can do it. I think. Suck it up. It's a lot of words. <laughs> Wing it. Hey, we're just having fun, right? It doesn't matter.
such a good song. The shorter the band and cream. I have a hair all band. Hey, did anybody happen to catch uh, any of those shows that I did over here with uh, Jack Bruce's son and Ginger Baker's son back in May? And that's all right, we broke up already, don't worry about it. We lasted as long as the real cream. All right. How are you? Hello. My car on fire. What? I really like what you said about we're having fun and don't worry because <laughs> we haven't rehearsed Gareth and I were in the booth last night and he said no, I was just going to be off the top of the room one night. Can you, can you, can you, oh, I see. You were out drinking all night. Mm, um, <laughs> by the way, um, you might have to turn my mic like, down. I'm quite bad. That's not... <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say, actually, that uh, I think it's a round of applause for Sean Baird for putting this thing together. He has done a spectacular job. Round of applause for Sean Baird. Thank you. 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 Thank There's no fair on being outnumbered. There's 16 strings of bass on that side of the stage. No, 12, I'm sorry. I failed math in high school. I go to summer school every year for math. I thought I would never have to use it in life and hear where I needed it most. Okay, so so you guys were out drinking last night and you decided you were going to sing this this could go horribly wrong. Okay. Is there a nice one?
it's appropriate. I have a girlfriend named Hugh. He liked it, right? Just came up with that too, right on the spot.
Get that on YouTube. <laughs> that was my fastest riff I ever caught. <laughs> 